It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. Uh, what's happening? Back for another week of um your favorite podcast, I guess. If you come here every week and you've been coming every here every week for how many years now? It's been six, seven, eight, I don't remember. Five, six. Something like that. Damn, it seemed longer than that. Yeah, maybe. That's what, you know, that's what sometimes girls say. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but either way, if you come back every week, uh, we appreciate you. Thank you. Um, let's get right to it. Andrew, what did you see this week that was positively brilliant? What did you see this week that made you say, what a fucking idiot? Uh, should we start out with positively brilliant or should we Whatever start out Whatever you want, with, baby. Um... Positively brilliant was NASCAR faking the noose thing. I thought that was positively. I knew that shit was fake immediately when they started talking about it. Was um, it fake though? Yeah, it was a like a rope pull for the garage door. Here's the thing: I saw that and I said, "How racist is NASCAR that they didn't notice a noose yeah, yeah, hanging from the garage door since last fucking that's year? Funny. It's just been there. <laughs> like nobody was walking by that shit and said." Hey man, that looks like a noose. Everybody just assumed it was the garage <laughs> garage door opener. Because a noose is a very specific type of rope style. Like it's actually a rope style. Right. Like if you've ever been in the Boy Scouts or whatever, you can Google. There is a noose. There's a way to tie it like a noose. Right. People just walked by it and just like, oh. <laughs> so yeah. this is why diversity matters. Yeah. Bubba, Bubba Wallace can't he be not the only one. Since 2019, huh? he never saw it. He probably was never paying no attention. I mean, everybody's a little bit more sensitive to uh, race and race issues now. Well, that's the thing. Like, once you buy an Acura, you notice every single time you see an Acura. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the second you get a new car, like, you get a new pair nah, of sneakers, right. you notice every single person with your new pair nah. of sneakers. So, like, nah, you're absolutely right. If you're going hard on, you know, uh, the racism that is in your sport and you're like, yo, we got to get this shit out of here. But I thought it was a dope moment. I just thought Bubba Wallace fucked it up by coming in 14th. If he won, he would have <laughs> had a perfect 30 for 30. That would have been the most amazing story ever. You already know. You got to win, baby. You got to win. You can't come you in 14th. You got to win. You know, black win. people were watching, bro. I think black people were like, yo, I might be into this shit. And then he came in 14th and he was like, eh. you know, You know why Ali's the GOAT? Because he won. He won. He came back and won. After going through all of that adversity, being out for a few years, he came back and he fucking won. You got to win, Bubba. Got to win. win. Got to win, man. Yeah, Yo, so that was, that was brilliant to me because I thought the marketing, if he would have won, the marketing would have been genius. And like, maybe you could have turned Mar Bubba into one of these like figures that uh, has like helped the sport cross over like Tiger Woods was for golf or the Williams sisters were for tennis. These traditional like, white sports and you've seen the sports blow up in terms of money once the black audience entered it. And I'm thinking, if I'm NASCAR, I'm like, oh, shit, we could go with this one if he had manages to pull through. And, I wonder uh, why more black people don't, don't fuck with NASCAR, though. Like, even just as drivers. I mean, it's, it's, it, I don't think it's a... I mean, I could be wrong. Please, feel free to tell me if I'm wrong, because I know y'all will. Yeah. But I, are they keeping people out, or are you black people know not gravitating it is? towards the sport? You don't want to know what it is? It's uh, it's the same reason why you don't see a lot of black people fuck with hockey. Because they they assume it's a well, white sport. They assume, but also the barrier to entry is it is is large because it's so expensive. Like these are really expensive sports. Like even if you look at like the F one people, like Formula uh -huh. One, the highest racing thing, they're all rich kids. Every okay. one of them, their parents are like, or almost every one of their parents are like millionaires or that kind of shit like that. And they just have tons of money because you need to have so much disposable income in order to like build out these race cars when you're younger and build out these go-karts and like constantly travel yeah. around the world for these tournaments. It's a super expensive thing. So um, you often see people who are very wealthy in it. And that's usually, if you want to look at the numbers, white people probably dominate the wealthy sector of America. No, I get it, but because I'm like, I know black people love cars. We're fast and furious. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And imagine driving in a place where they can't pull you over. Yeah, high-speed chase. I, it could be <laughs> like, like, really, yo, it's right up your alley, man. That's why I'm, I'm upset, Bubba. Why'd you come in 14th? Supposed to come in number one, baby. You should have acted, like, acted like the people who put that noose on that garage door was chasing you. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, you know what they should have done? You know the his rear view mirror? They should have just put cop cars in it. You know what I mean? So like, so he actually can't see anything behind him but cop cars and he just goes for it. You thought that was brilliant in NASCAR? The only reason I say I don't think it was brilliant in NASCAR is because like NASCAR already has the perception of being racist. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about NASCAR nah, other right. than that. I, I guess what I, uh, let me clarify. If NASCAR like blew up the story mm-hmm. as a way where they could then showcase how accepting and, and, uh, how uh, willing to like fight against racism they were, which is what they did the next day, right? Like all the people rolled him out and the whole crowd is going crazy and he's crying. He's got the American flag face cover thing. Like if you, for a moment you're like, Oh my God, NASCAR is not racist, man. These people are actually rooting for this guy. And like, this is a beautiful moment. And then the next day you find out that the news ain't real. So they marketed it brilliant, they, brilliantly. Yeah. I'll say they did that. That was the absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and what the FBI said, uh, it wasn't noose, but it wasn't a hate crime targeted towards Bubba Wallace. Yeah, and they can't really even confirm that I think that it was like a a, a noose noose. No, nah, they said it was a noose. Oh, yeah? I mean, it's a, I mean, like I said, a noose is a rope style. So ah yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. it was a it, it was it was in the form of a noose like which even would make sense as a garage puller right it would also Just make way- sense for NASCAR that they would find a way to put nooses in there <laughs> that, that I'm telling like, you bro like I'm telling that's that's why diversity matters a black person would have saw that last year and be like bro what the fuck are you doing yeah like that's a noose like that's not gonna work yeah okay? we need a different rope pull I'm gonna tell you what I saw that was positively brilliant yeah what did you um, say John Stewart's movie oh, irresistible. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of mixed reviews of, of it, but I, I don't even like when people say stuff like that, when they say, oh, I've been seeing a lot of mixed reviews. Of course you've been seeing mixed reviews because mm-hmm. everybody's going to have different opinions of, of a movie, right? But um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It stars uh, Steve Carroll, Steve Carell, and uh, Rose Bird, I think her name is. Okay. And it's um, it's a, it's a, it's a, politi- it's a movie about political satire. It's a, it's, and it just shows like, how fucked up the media is, how fucked up political strategists are, how fucked up, you know, our government is. It's it's actually really, it's, it's, I thought it was good. I think, I think, I thought it was highly entertaining. Yeah. And I love when people, um, when people like Jon Stewart find different mechanisms to get their messaging out. Because we all know Jon Stewart has a very unique POV. Uh, we watched it on The Daily Show for years. Right. But he, he hasn't been on The Daily Show in forever. So the only time you see John is when he pops up on Colbert here and there. Right. You know, and um, for him to have put together this whole movie after all of this time, I thought it's a good look for him, especially being that he had a deal with HBO and never gave HBO nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, he is did, is he the deal on one HBO? Thing to HBO? Is the what? Is the deal on HBO? No, the he deal, had a deal movie, with HBO. Is the movie on HBO? No, 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 no. The, movie was, the movie's coming out in theaters. Oh. Actually, it's coming out this Friday. It's going to come out in theaters and um, at home on demand or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Every, have you been doing that? Have you been watching movies that are supposed to come out in theaters? Have you been watching them at home? Nah, but I've been watching tons of movies. But I don't think we're going back to the theaters, bro. I think that's a wrap. Yeah, I think it's a wrap, too. I think, I think it's a wrap for everything that's not a big blockbuster. I think that stuff like Marvel, those Fast and Furious... Those will be events that'll be in some form of theater. Yeah. Everything else we can watch at home. Yeah, you know what's interesting? Like, why didn't why haven't they done like Avengers? Why didn't they do that at Cowboys Stadium? That's what I would have done. If I'm Jerry Jones, I'm like, yo, you guys want to premiere this here? Get a hundred thousand people, everybody gets a headset. And then just play it on that massive screen. You got a hundred thousand people weeping as Iron Man about, dies. You mean before Corona? Yeah, pre-corona. Yeah, okay, why did that you, never you, happen? Why didn't you have these like giant cultural events in these massive stadiums? Because I think post-corona, that's the only place you could do it. You could do drive-throughs or you could do like open-air venues, but nobody's going to some tiny ass movie theater sitting in the same seats. Some nah. other motherfucker was just sitting in coughing all over the place. Now I'm not gonna lie, I would go to a movie theater if I went to Cowboy Stadium. Tell me why. 80 th- it's, a, it's a matter of numbers at this time, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'll take my chances with 80 before I take my chances with 80,000. <laughs> Yo, but think about the the protests, the Black Lives Matter protests and marches. Like, nobody, it seems like there weren't spikes in Corona because of that. Good cause. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a good they, 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 Corona's you know, racist. It's a good cause. Corona's, Corona's racist. <laughs> it's a good cause. Like I'm saying, it's, it's Trump cards in this thing, right? Okay. Racism, police brutality, a video like George Floyd, that's a big joker. Coronavirus is kind of like the little joker, deuce of diamonds, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm willing to risk my big Trump card. You know, I'm about right. that. This is worth it. Yes. You know, I can, if I get it, I, I I can say, hey, I was out of the protest. Nobody will call me an idiot. Nobody will shit on me. You know what I mean? But if I say, hey, I went to go watch Avengers at fucking Cowboy Stadium, they'd be like, good for your fucking stupid ass. Then you get some Tell, th- tell Thanos, snap your shit away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 tell, tell Thanos, fucking snap your shit away since, it, since, since, since uh, going to see Avengers was worth it. Nah, what else it, did you it see was, this week? Though. Say again? You know, Avengers was. I watched that shit every... I watched that shit once a week. Really? I watched the last hour... No, probably the last, it's like 50 minutes it's from when Hulk snaps to when Tony Stark snaps. I watch that scene at least once a week. That yeah. segment of the movie, I watch at least once a week. That <laughs> shit gets my adrenaline going, yeah, bro. That, that, shit is like, is. that shit is like watching Rocky beat the Russian, bro. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> When fucking Captain America gets that goddamn hammer, yeah, and he starts wailing on Thanos, and then Thanos fucks him up, yeah, and Thanos, in that moment, Thanos realized he had enough of these motherfuckers. <laughs> when, Thanos, when Thanos said, "In all my years," Thanos is like an old grandma, old black grandma. Thanos said, "In all my years, I have gone from planet to planet, universe to universe, destroying planets, and I've never taken it personal." <laughs> But what I'm about to do to your fucking plan, <laughs> I am going to enjoy every moment of it. Yeah. Cause he was sick of they shit. He yeah. was like, these motherfuckers will not go away. <laughs> these motherfuckers went back in time to stop me. They back again. Why are they fucking with my future so much? Why are you so committed to fucking up my future? <laughs> like, like, can you imagine how Thanos felt in that second, bro? <laughs> Thanos was ill, bro. That, Thanos is the greatest <laughs> superhero villain of all time. Ooh, speak on it. He is. Why who's you say than, that? Who's better than Thanos? I okay. Let me throw another one at you. Joker. Joker can't fuck with Thanos. Tell me why. Joker petty. Joker's a fucking little. You're a local petty thief. You just want Gotham. <laughs> Thanos. You just. That's all you wanted. This fucking. Gotham, this fictional Son, city? How did people not want? move out of Gotham, bro? Go to Jersey. Just, like, <laughs> like, how, how much shit needs That's to go it. down in Gotham before you're like, I need to be in a Hoboken. That's it. What's it's not, going listen, on? Thanos was a universal, worldwide... You can't avoid it. ...planetary threat. You yeah. can't avoid it. Gotham, Joker, Penguin, Riddler, all that shit happened in that one city? So Within 10 years. That's I mean, a tough you, decade. I know the problem. Go. Batman ain't had no black villains. <laughs> <laughs> black man had one black villain. White people in that city would have had enough and got the fuck on, bro. Yo, you think, you listen, think white people are looking at Joker and Penguin shit like, they're just misunderstood. They're just God. misunderstood. Joker got mental health issues. Yeah, yeah, Penguin got body they, dysmorphia. They, they, it's just, they, they're just angry. Hurt people hurt people. <laughs> the Riddler, you just don't understand his sense of humor. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Son, one, that's hysterical. One black guy comes in here and starts stealing purses. They're like, we need to out. move downtown. Okay, exactly. <laughs> Guess who came to fucking dinner? Okay. <laughs> if Batman had one black villain, Bruh. that would have been enough for Gotham, bro. Oh, my God, dude. That'd be so funny, like, the first black guy that, like, Batman stops, and Batman's yeah. like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, what's up with your voice, fam? What's going on? <laughs> just speak regularly. Yo, you hear him? And his stupid-ass voice, bro? Yo, take a lozenge, bro. Take a recola. <laughs> how, how, how gentrified is Gotham? Bro, Gotham been gentrified since, the, since day one. <laughs> yeah. Like, the only bad element in Gotham seems to be the villains. Yeah, yeah, keep, wait, 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 what do you mean? Keep going on that. Uh, the only bad element in Gotham seems to be the villain. So, like, you're saying the economy seems to be all right. The economy these... is great, clearly. Okay. Bruce Wayne then was billionaires. And and not only was Bruce Wayne them billionaires, nobody ever treated Bruce Wayne any differently. His, he, he was just walking around regular. It's not like, it's not like Tony Stark. When Tony Stark walked in a room, it's like Shut people it bow down. down. Shut yes. it down. 
wherever Bruce Wayne was, it seemed like it was people that was on his level. Yeah, he was are, just having are, like a nice business dinner. That's it. Mind yeah. his business everywhere he goes. He wasn't even the, the life of the party any fucking way. Yeah, like he wasn't uh, royalty. It didn't feel he like wasn't royalty. royalty. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, so you think we need some black villains. That's it. One black villain would have changed Gotham forever. Whoa. Because people would have moved. And then eventually Batman would have been like, well, fuck it. I don't have no reason to be here because I don't got nobody to protect. That is interesting. Like, there are some ways where you could just, like, completely ruin comic books. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like there, you could really ruin comic books, bro. They, they, they got a series coming out on Netflix called About What If. What If. What If. Yeah, What If used to be, what if used to be a, a comic book as well, but it would uh, say, like, What If... Iron Man was the king of Wakanda. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if Spider Man scenarios like that? What if Spider Man grew up in like a rural town where there was nothing to swing on? <laughs> <laughs> where there just, was nothing to swing on? He'd bro. just be shooting cum out of his wrist. Like, yo, look at this weirdo <laughs> getting all the girl, getting all the town girls pregnant. <laughs> that's, that's what Spider Man would have been doing. You know, I want to. I, I did want to talk about this, man. I saw this this week, man, and I think um, I think it's very dangerous. I saw it happen to a couple of people, and I'm glad it didn't actually go anywhere. Um, the, the 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 accusers, the people that accused Justin Bieber of rape, it was Justin Bieber, and um, it was another person too. I saw. I can't remember who the other person was. Oh, Put that, that up for me, Taylor. If, it was if you like can. um Tyler. So he's he's part of a boy group. Or he's part of a boy group. Yeah, hold on. I'll find it. Yeah, look it up. The reason I thought that was dangerous was this. Mm -hmm. um, you should not be allowed, and I can't tell you what you're allowed to do because people are going to do it. You make fake Twitter accounts, right? No picture, no nothing. And you just tell this story, mm -hmm. right? You just tell this story about how you were sexually assaulted, whatever. Um, I think it's very journalistic. Harry Styles, that's what Harry Styles, there? the guy from One Direction. Uh... Cole, Cole Sprouse. Cole Sprouse, that's his name. I don't know who that is, bro. Yeah, Cole that sounds Sprouse. sounds like a side dish. He's from, <laughs> he's from Riverdale? Oh, the show Riverdale? From Riverdale and the Sweet Like a Zack and Cody. Anyway, on, bro. what I'm simply trying to say is, oh, yeah. he's famous. These, these, anonymous, <laughs> these anonymous Twitter accounts popped up, right? No pictures, no nothing. Yeah. And they were telling these stories. I thought it was very journalistically irresponsible for media outlets to turn that into a headline. Yeah. Twitter is like that, garbage. You can't do that, yo. Like, it, it just, just, you're, you're not going to do no fact checking. You're not going to do no vetting. Like, bro, can just, I tell you something? random Twitter accounts? Can I tell you something how lazy these journalists are? So in the post, I think it was like yesterday or something like that. Like, I got written up with a few other comedians about like people who are like, comedians who are like succeeding during Corona or quarantine, right? When the girl that wrote the story messaged me, she had no fucking clue about me at all. Like, I was like, are you familiar with any of, like, the things I've been doing? Like, the rant that I do weekly or the podcast I do? Like, are you familiar with any shit? She was like, oh, no, someone told me that, like, uh, you were involved in, like, the call her daddy beef. <laughs> I was like, so you were going to write an article about how I'm winning <laughs> during Corona and have no fucking clue nor any research before you even have a conversation with me? And I called her out. I was like, yo, you're the reason why Trump, when Trump says fake news, people believe him. No, you're right. You're the fucking reason why your you're business right. is going down because there's no integrity in this shit. It's like, yo, you no got to do the research. Bro, we do this weekly rant, right? You know how fucking hard it is to find a topic that we really care about? One topic a week for five minutes. These people that do it every single day, you got to make some shit up. You got to make some shit up. You uh, really do. Because I'm not going to lie. I was disgusted by the Justin Bieber stuff only because like, listen, if it's an actual woman, Right? Somebody yeah. that you can verify that this person really exists. She has every right to tell her story. Yes. If you want if you want to run with the story, cool. But an anonymous, a Twitter account? Nah, B. With no picture? Nah. Like, I don't even think it was a last name. And Justin and, and, had receipts, too. Had receipts? Justin came with the receipts, bro. But that, I but love I that. I, I, I didn't like that either, but I understand why he did it. Nah, you, you know gotta do it, bro. You gotta... I, I, you, I get it. Sometimes you got to nip it in the bud. Sometimes you don't. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at however you choose to handle it, right? Yeah. He 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 nipped it in the bud. Um, I probably would have ignored it only because I'm like I'm not ignore. I'm not responding to these 
anonymous Twitter trolls. It's like, yo, you can't give people that kind of power is what yo, I'm saying. You're 100%, because once you, you're 100% once you go right. down that rabbit hole, they're going to be doing all types of shit like that. Because all they care, it's like some people get off on these, seeing these fake stories that they create and go viral. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Bro. Mm-hmm. It's, it's weird. empowering to them, right? They're in their fucking grandparents' basement. They have no power in their own personal lives. They're like, wow, can I take down this big person? Can I take down this corporation? Can I get this guy fired? They get off on that shit. It's and it's and it's funny, man, how these um how these stories like pop up and the things that you get canceled for. Cause we were we were like mapping it out yesterday. Like the things that people are getting canceled for now are either racism or Sexual misconduct, right? Those are the two ca- categories, right? It seems to me, racism, if it's proved that it was a joke, you don't get canceled. You get kind of like paused, right? You just kind of like got to chill and then you can come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can look at all these people who have done blackface that like they apologize and then everything keeps on going or they get chastised on the internet for a couple of days. As long as it's a joke... They're forgiven and they come back. But any of that sexual misconduct shit, it's a wrap, bro. Yeah, I mean, because the sexual misconduct stuff is, um, you know, it's a crime and and, it, and it's a violent crime. Yeah. You know? And if you can't, if you don't have no real receipts like bro, DNA test or video to prove you wasn't there, like you yeah. got to have real receipts in order for people to look at you and be like, all right, he good. Yep. You know, but if you don't have no receipts and it's just he said, she said. 95% of the time, they probably going to side with the woman. And that's and I why... Can't, I, can't, I, I can't be mad at them for that. Nah, but that's why, like, there's two components. Like, one, that's why if somebody comes at you with some fake shit, right, in the sexual misconduct category, you got to fight for your life, bro. You got to fight for your life. You got to fight your for lawyers. your fucking life. Yes. You got to go down, yes. swing, 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 bro. Start hooking off on motherfuckers. By hooking off, I don't actually mean punching people, but like, yo, post the evidence, do everything you want because that's yes. a stain that don't come out. So don't let that stain set. I think that website should be held liable. Who? Twitter? I th- and yes. I think the social media sites, I think uh, the, the websites that run this shit, you got to be held liable because if people yep. are able to come on your platform and slander you in that way. Yep. With no evidence, no proof, and now your reputation is fucked up or you lose opportunities or whatever it is, yes. Yes, Justin Bieber should be able to sue the fuck out of Twitter. If 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 Twitter didn't man, I don't even know. I was about to say if Twitter didn't handle it in a in a in a timely manner, but how do you fucking know? Well, Once here's this the shit thing. goes up and goes viral. Here's the thing about Twitter, right? Twitter's unique. Um in, ter- in terms of like all the other uh, social media platforms, it's unique in the way that it makes things trend and like promotes trending things. And it's really easy to get something trending. Uh, you can get something trending with like 20, uh, you know, posts about it from different accounts. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah, all yeah. of a sudden this shit is trending. And then once something is trending, people go, oh, that must be the story. So Twitter yeah. creates all these stories based on their algorithm, right? In a way that no other social media platform does. And it really creates the hysteria so, yeah, they should be kind of held accountable if you're making this bigger than it really fucking is. Yeah, I mean, somebody got to be held accountable because you can't never get to those goddamn trolls. Yeah. By the way, that that is a new level of trolling. That, that's a new level of trolling. Yeah. Like that's, you a different type of troll when you do some shit like that. Like, to wake up one day and say, I'm going to make a fake Twitter account and tell these stories about XYZ individual and yeah. then have that person respond to the story. I'm telling you, it's some little kid somewhere or some adult somewhere Getting off on that shit. Getting off on the fact that his story was a headline on all of these different websites. That Justin yeah. Bieber replied to his story. I'm telling you, he's sitting around right now in Gotham, okay? About to be a supervillain showing fucking his friends what he just caused on the internet. Yeah. And and, and, and as far as, um, you know, what you was talking about with the uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Fallon. All of that shit. Silverman, yeah, yeah. yeah I, this isn't a positively brilliant R. What a fucking idiot! This is just another observation. Um, it comes a point in time where we, as a community, uh, people of a certain age, we have to sit down and have a conversation about cultural context because cultural context matters. the The eighties. I'm only speaking for the eras that I was around for. The eighties, the nineties the early 2000s, 
was a wild time. <laughs> it was a wild fucking time. I don't even know how to explain it to you if you weren't there. If I was born in the year 2000 and I was one of these young, progressive, woke, leaned all the way to the left liberals, and I watched some of this shit from the 80s, some of this shit from the 90s, some of this shit from the 2000s, whether it was TV, film, listening to music, I totally understand your outrage. I totally understand why you're upset. And I'm not even going to sit here and say things like, well, he, I was just a man of the time or Jimmy Kimmel was just a man of the time. There was a time where it was all about how shocking you could be. It was all about pushing shit to the motherfucking limit. Mm -hmm. There was no, there was no line. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that line y'all talk about crossing now, motherfuckers used to fucking milli rock over that shit, <laughs> trip walk all over that shit, okay, moonwalk all over that shit, didn't give a fuck about no line, Yeah. and if you're going to be mad at Jimmy Kimmel, you got to be mad at the whole system, and the reason I say that is, he was on a talk show, a popular talk show, that means he had a network that was okay with this shit, yeah. It was standards and practices that I was that was okay with this shit. Yeah. It was a group of writers that was okay with this shit. Yeah. It was a showrunner that was okay with this shit. They all collectively came together and said, hey, man, this is a good idea. So you got to understand cultural context, bro. Yeah. Cultural context fucking matters. People were driving the speed limit that the highway allowed you to drive back then. Right. And when they changed the speed limit and it was time to slow down because it was the best thing for all of us, mm -hmm. we all slowed the fuck down. And I, isn't it proof that people can change given the yes. context of the time they live in? Like, that's why I don't understand why people want to cancel them for what they did 20 years ago. Like, Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel have become like the neutered, unfunny, woke people that the extreme left wants them to be, right? Like... Back in the day, Kimmel used to be funny. Like he had the man show on Comedy Central. He would like take risks, et cetera. And he wasn't like wagging his finger at people for bad behavior, but he's changed into the cuck that the left wants him to be. I think when you're when you're when you're a Jimmy Kimmel um or anybody, you know, I, I use me as an example. I'm not preaching at nobody. Right. Right? But I know what I was, I know what the fuck I was. <laughs> okay, I'm not delusional about it. Right. So I'm not coming from a judgy, judgy point of view where I'm like, Jimmy Kimmel is wrong for wearing blackface and he needs to be canceled. Yeah, that. No, Jimmy Kimmel needs to be viewed at through the lens of cultural context. Mm. And what was his intention? Even with Howard Stern, I'm, I'm a diehard Howard Stern fan. I'm a radio guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Somebody said to me yesterday, yo, what Howard Stern did was racist. I'm like, bro, Howard Stern was a shock jock. Everybody, everybody got it with Howard Stern. Right. Anybody could get it. Black people, Jewish people, Asian people, gay people. Like, whatever limit there was to push when it came to racist shit, sexist shit, misogynistic shit, Howard Stern would give you that. <laughs> like, like, so, he was a shock jock. I'm, he wasn't targeting one group. You know what I'm saying? And saying, this is the right. group I'm going to go after. This is what I'm going. No, that wasn't his shtick at all. His shtick was shock. Right. If it could shock you, that's what he was going for. Right. Cultural cultural context matters, man. It really does. What you gonna cancel? You wanna cancel Snoop Dogg? Because Snoop Dogg's old music. Because Snoop Dogg had a, a a murder case back in the day. Like like it was. It's people grow, people evolve, but also once again, context fucking. Matters. Cultural why, context matters. Why is it we got a statue of limitations on crime, but not jokes? Because a lot of people are discovering this shit now and they really don't. Bro, this shit is literally like being in the quantum realm. There's no, we don't have no, we don't have no, uh, no, what's the word of time? No, no, no uh, concept, concept of, of time. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have no concept of time on the internet. On the right. internet, if you see Jimmy Kimmel in blackface, you don't get, I don't give a fuck if it's 20 years ago. This is Jimmy Kimmel in blackface. Right, right, right. If you right, see right. Howard Stern, you know, saying the N-word, there's no cultural context. This is Howard Stern saying the N-word. It doesn't matter that he said this shit 25, 30 years ago. It doesn't matter what the joke was. It's like, this is wrong. And by the way, it probably was wrong then. And we were just too young and too high 
and two, not giving a fuck to notice. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm just telling you that it a lot of this shit went down, bro. A lot of this shit in the 80s, 90s. It's it's movies I can tell you to watch right now that you would be like, holy shit. Yeah. I actually want to do a, a a TV show or a, a, a YouTube series about, about that. About what? Like problematic glasses. Like, you know how you got the 3D glasses? Problematic seeing, glasses. Seeing, seeing content through a problematic lens. Like, now that yeah. you're older... And you're a little bit more wiser, yeah. and you know what people deem problematic. Going through these different movies and TV shows with a fine tooth comb, yeah, and pointing out things that are problematic, yeah, you be you be fucking shocked, yeah. I mean, that's what we like. We like problematic shit. Like, is what we're drawn to, <laughs> right? It's like, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's shit that they show now that you wouldn't even realize it. Like, like. Marty McFly's daddy punched Biff in the jaw and knocked him out after Biff just finished sexually assaulting <laughs> Marty McFly's mom in Back to the Future. Yeah. In a goddamn old school car in front of a high school. In a PG movie. In a PG <laughs> fucking <laughs> Or PG-13 max. It wasn't R. <laughs> right? No, nah, I, I don't seen- think it was PG-13 at all. I think it might have been PG. Yeah, I think Back to the Future was PG. Yeah. But, but Biff, Biff was excited. Yeah. Biff saw her in that car in that dress, and he was like, oh, shit, we got action. And for the next five minutes of the movie, they fighting in the front seat. It's, it's like, but that was regular in a PG movie. Yeah. So it's just like, yo, it's a lot of shit that happened in that era, in yo. that time. That that you know we what? need to have it should be, we should have a discussion about cultural context, bro. Yeah, that's that's also important. And also it's like like another discussion that's interesting to have is like uh and I've just been talking to my girl about stuff as all these kind of like accusations come out. It's like literally every girl that I've spoken to has a story with a dude where the guy did something like really shady and made her feel uncomfortable. Literally mm-hmm. every single girl that I've spoken to has a story where, where it was like, yeah, I actually felt like unsafe in that moment. I was like scared. Right. So I think I get why like the, the Me Too movement or like these movements where women are coming and they're speaking out. I guess I get why it happens because for so long they've probably complained about this stuff and nobody listened. Nobody paid no attention. Yeah. Nobody paid. So the second somebody's willing to listen. All of a sudden, they're like, well, shit, I got something to say, too. Everybody ignored me in, in, you know, in the fucking 80s. I'd love to tell you all about some shit. Well, that's why it's called Me Too. And, and by the way, you know, right. uh, when you have a village, it gives you it gives you confidence. It gives you confidence. So it's it like, confidence. I get I get that. And then, obviously, with that, you're going to get maybe an overcorrection. You're going to get these stories like the one about Bieber that are fake. And then the reason why these people who create these fake stories are so bad is because they delegitimize all the real fucking stories that these girls got to deal with. That they're finally getting listened to, and but you give them go. We sh- we shouldn't legitimize anonymous Twitter handles, right? You know what I'm saying? Like right. we got we got we got a we and, and I'm I think we have like just me, the media has, but we really do have to take these sexual assault cases, these rape cases, a lot more serious. And when you're just letting anonymous Twitter handles have a voice, anonymous Twitter handles with no pictures, no nothing, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. Say say save that. Save that blog space or that that print space for a real story, a story that has some credibility behind it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, like, talking about a real story, Taylor said she had a clit ring. Isn't that mutilation? Yo, that is self-mutilation. That's self-mutilation, yo. That's self-vaginal mutilation. It was just piercing on the ears and everything. That's mutilation too. What? I don't really know what music. Why does why does why does Schultz know you got a clip ring, Taylor? Um, what were y'all talking about? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just, just got said distracted I by Charlotte's hairline. Can you take your hat <laughs> off again? That shit was adorable, bro. This shit gone Friday though. Say what? This shit gone Friday. I mean, it never really was here. <laughs> I don't. No, cut it's it, kind of growing. Now. I think you guys just shave the middle of it and then just keep the sides. No, do not lit. do, do not that's do that, that's, that, that's that Monistat Seven and that Jamaican cast oil. Yo, honestly, can I see the back? Do you have a, any bald spot in the crown or no? Hell 
Oh, no. no, you out here, Son, Shy. You might want to just kind of get a little... Before you shave it down, you might want to see what the bartender, bartender, the barber could do to it. I know. I'm drunk. You might want to see what the barber could do. The barber might be able to salvage that. No all bullshit. All he needs to do, he just needs to I don't want it. I don't like hair, bro. Stuff. That's all. Yeah. I don't like hair. I don't like hair the way Taylor don't like her clit. Excuse me. <laughs> so <laughs> That's not what it is. What was going through your mind when you decided to shoot a hole through your clitoris? I just thought it was sexy. Oh. And Where did I you see one at? On porn. So you were watching oh. porn. You saw the porn girls had a thing through their clit. And then you're like, I'm going to get that. And then you just went to your local piercer? I didn't go to my local piercer. Where did you, what, you had your friend do it? How'd no. You, how'd you get it How'd I mean, there is, I mean, there's piercings downtown or people do piercings downtown, whatever. Like a uh, actual building, whatever. Yeah. And... I said I wanted it done. They get they have people do that all the time though. Wow, Who picked that's out the earring. And what kind of earring is it? Is it a hoop? A little First of all, I don't stuff? have it anymore. But when I took you that had out. it, what was it? Like a wine cork? It was just like <laughs> a wine cork. What the fuck? <laughs> it's just like um, what do they call it? A silver. It's ball. a bar. Yeah, so, the barbell thing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it was like What's a pinch. It? That's it. Damn, what right? smells worse, the earring back when it's in your ear, or oh the earring back God. when it's on your clip? First of all, my clit don't smell. My vagina doesn't smell. Period. And then, well, probably be my earring though. If you're gonna make a choice, really, the earring back when it's in your ear. Because I'm always you have as a woman, you have to constantly clean your vagina. Vagina. Yeah, really? not constantly, but like you gotta make sure it's good. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> So are you admitting, Taylor Gang? No, I'm young not. Liberty, I'm not are liber- you admitting <laughs> that your earring stink. <laughs> that my what? Dude, you know what's are crazy? Are you admitting your earring stink? Yeah, because I don't take them out all the time. Yeah, probably. Like, I'm not mad about saying that. <laughs> wow. Wow, Taylor. That's wow. Young this Liberty, This is the second bro. earring. Young like Liberty, I don't <laughs> Liberty is crazy because you Whoa. know what? your clitoris has a crack in it. <laughs> First of all, no, it actually it, it closed up very quickly. It did? Yeah. Whoa. So listen, why did you get rid of it? I did it get caught in some jeans? No, like I got rid- <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of it yeah. because um, niggas don't know how to eat your pussy without trying to play with that. If you want to get real. Wait, wait, wait. Why'd you get so thugged out right there, dude? That was sick. Yo, that was sick. You really put your foot down on that one. Let's go, Taylor. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me shake that gangster off me real quick. She sounds like she got a big ass fucking, she sounds like she got a big ass beard with a big long Allen Iverson jersey on with a Philly cheesesteak in her hand. <laughs> Block, standing on the block talking about yo niggas don't know how to eat pussy I <laughs> the, <tourist. laughs> the fuck uh, oh, yeah. wait what would they do with the was this- they were just like it was literally just to be for decoration and they they, they felt like you're supposed to keep playing with it so that's not what you're supposed to do so oh. you telling me when you smelt that earring it's, it had male saliva on it and whatever you were why secreting. no what do you t- what but they had to lick all over it. They did have to lick all over it. So there's so probably when you took it out and you saliva. sniffed it because I know no, you it's smelled not it. Oh, saliva! With some when whiz. You took it out and you put it right to your nose. That's the first thing you did. I don't yeah. know why we do that as humans, but we do. What? Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't. Soon as you, yes, you did. No, I didn't. There's the actually first thing. The first thing you did when you took it out was smell it. Now, did you put it in your ear? Did you repurpose Ew, the uh, what? No. What? Did a guy ever whisper in your ear? And he was like, this smells like pussy. Yo. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. So I, had, I had to text Taylor last week because um, I was reading YouTube comments. What happened? Uh, whenever I feel like torturing myself, that's what I like to do. <laughs> it's, it's sort of like self-mutilation, I guess, right? It's kind of like cutting. For real, it's kind of like cutting, right? <laughs> okay, so go. I'm on, I'm on YouTube, and they're like, yo, Charlemagne bullies Taylor. Um, he doesn't ever let Taylor talk. And I'm like, Taylor, you feel like a bully? The tides are turning? <laughs> is there Taylor support out there? No, they hate her. No, they, there they is, always, though. They <laughs> always preface it with, I hate Taylor, but. But. <laughs> <laughs> 
they always say they always make sure to say I hate Taylor. That's not true. Do that they, is very true. I get very stuff factual. in my DMs all the time, but I don't like. I've known you for how long? Five years now, Charlotte. Like I don't know. That's I don't, it. Yeah. <laughs> now, God, did you know damn. him BC before Clit or like <laughs> after? <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when did you get it rid of it? <laughs> He's so happy about this. Um, like a couple years ago, huh? A couple years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hooked up only with only five one years? girl. Wow. One girl I hooked up with had it, but she had her lip pierced. Ugh. Yeah, it was weird, and I didn't know what to do, so I just. Move the ring out the way, and then I just did what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that the ring was just there for decoration. That's new to yes, me. Yes, you're not supposed to, like, guys think you're supposed to, like, suck. No, that hurts. Like It hurts? Yes, there's a piercing in it. Like, yeah. why are you trying to tear it up? Like, just go towards, like, lower. Go towards the, the vagina. The hole, yeah. Maybe you should have pierced the part that you want them to lick, and then it'd be, like, a cool target. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but either way, back to what Charlotte's saying. Yes. Um, I I don't take it necessarily personal because I don't know, I just like in a way, like with my friends, we kinda we give them the real shit too. Like, I don't know, it's not like You're used a, to jokes. You're yeah, used to balls, like I'm used to balls. jokes yeah. and everything else like that. That's why you get along with the show. You go but, the Yeah, absolutely. I don't care as much as I did this weekend, though. I was just a little sensitive. But you were in your feelings when you were looking at them comments I, and everybody was, was so, defending I, I, Taylor? I was, so, I, was, I was somewhere between O and K. But Charlotte, we, and, me and you have talks all the time after the, like, you know what I mean? So it's not yeah. like... I'm, I'm very, I'm very, uh, I try to be very aware of how I make the people around me feel. I'm very aware of that because I don't care about the opinion of other people that don't know me. You're right. that funny. What? That's a great way of describing it. I, hey, I'm very aware of how I make you feel. Now, I might make you feel like shit, but at least I'm aware. That it might happen. Feeling. It might happen. Listen, I am an acquired taste. Schultz, Schultz, you're an acquired taste. 100%. I was on a I was on a conference call yesterday Ugh. crying laughing because they was asking me to participate in something. And I, I was like, well, who's all participating? And they was like, well, everybody said yes except for one person because he can't do it. But Andrew Schultz just told us no. Just flat out no. <laughs> just, just, just flat out no. And I'm, di I'm dying laughing, right? And I go, why would Andrew... I, I said to them, I said, why would Andrew say no? And then in my mind, I'm thinking, you know why the fuck he said no. It's Andrew. That's what the fuck is wrong with you. So I'm dying laughing. And I'm like, I'm going to call Andrew and find out why he didn't do it. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. What is it? The, the do it? <laughs> shit? I don't think we can say it. I don't want to put it out there. No, nah, we can say it. Up. Nah, because I don't think they advertise the shit. But still, they you could bleep it. But you know why? <laughs> yeah, let's bleep it. Let's bleep it. Let's bleep it. I just thought it was funny because when you know your people, yeah. shit like that don't surprise you. Wait, what, so what happened? Break it down. What happened? You, <laughs> I'm, just, uh, what I'm happened? talking. I'm just on the phone. You know what I mean? And I'm like, like all right, I'm down. And um, I'm like, well, who's all in? Who's all in? I said, I'm down. Who's all involved? And it was telling everybody that's involved. And it was like, only one person because they couldn't do it. No, two people because they couldn't do it. But then Andrew just flat out told us no. Andrew Schultz told us no. <laughs> and I'm just it's fucking crazy. I'm like, has he, has he gave y'all the fucking has he again? <laughs> I'm like, so he didn't give y'all no reason? He was like, no, he's just like, no. <laughs> no, well, no, that's the reason. No. <laughs> By the way, no should be enough. Right? right? Like, why? Right? When we say no, no why should mean no? Yeah, why can't no mean no? Exactly. Why, <laughs> why they try to put the tip in? You know what I mean? They, they out here trying to put the tip in, bro. Why can't no mean no? You know what I mean? No, you cannot just eat it. Okay? <laughs> no. Uh, let's bleep it, though. I don't want to blow their spot up. I don't want to blow up the fact what they're trying to do. Hey, like, man. I, just, I, just, I wish them I best just, of luck. I'm, I'm super, you know me, I'm the most grateful for everything. That's super yeah. grateful. It's always love right there. But, I don't, you know, you can still make correct business decisions. 
you know? And if I don't think it's the right business decision, I don't, you know, I'm not going to no, rock with you. you. Simple as that. I'm with you. I'm with you. I also asked them how much they were paying and they didn't say, so. The oh, that's was, something I, yeah, something like that, I wouldn't even, uh, money, I wouldn't even be thinking about money. I'd love shit. to be in that yeah. position. <laughs> that's a nice Yo, position. I'm going to be honest with you. I know for a fact that at this point in my life, money does not move me. Money is out. Money, money has never really ever truly moved me, to be honest with you. Yeah. I like, I like doing things that have meaning. I like doing things that have purpose. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to do things that can empower other people. And I want to do things that make the world better. You know what? Straight I, up. I, I fuck with you 100%. I think that that's right. I don't think, I think we've, something we've been saying on this show forever is that money does not motivate us. Nah. That, you know, but money does allow you to do certain things. Absolutely. You know, and if like crazy amount of money allows us to like expand the studio or film a show that we want to do or like create our own project. It gives projects, you freedom. It gives you freedom. And that's really the idea for me, you know, with, with money it, and that kind of stuff. But we'll see what happens, freedom. bro. We'll see what but happens. It, don't, it doesn't give you peace of mind. Though. I need people to really understand that. Because I'm going to tell you something that I've added to my repertoire. I am a full-blown tree hugger now, bro. What you mean? I'm a fucking tree hugger. Like, legitimately going in my backyard <clears throat> and putting my hands on trees and putting my forehead to the trees and praying and meditating. Let me tell that's, you something. That's not a tree hugger, bro. <laughs> What's a tree hugger? <laughs> Yo, son. Shut, shut, shut. A what, tree am hugger. I a tree, am I a tree fondler? No, no. A tree <laughs> yeah, hugger is, a, is a derogatory term used for hippies. Because they love yeah, the environment. But I thought it's because they, I thought it's because they're so in touch with nature that they go and they touch things. And they no, they're just making fun of them. They're basically like, "Yo, you love nature so much, you would hug a tree." Yeah. <laughs> you're just clowning, mother. They don't really think they <laughs> hug trees. Well, you out here funny. hugging trees, bro? I, I was, I was on the phone with my sacred purpose coach. Uh, salute to Yachty. With your and what? Like, my sacred purpose coach. How much like money a, you spend in a week on just like mental a health lot. shit? That's where my money goes, baby. Bruh, I'm not, holy I don't, shit. You go, y'all go buy the phantom, phantoms and the ghosts. I'm investing in my mental wealth for real, for real. Like, Yo, I, just yes. call me. I got you. I do I, that too. 30 all minutes all... a week. You just tell me about the trees you want to hug. I'll be like, don't do that shit. And then listen, we'll get off the phone. It'll be all, mad all, Listen, all that counts. I like therapy. I like my sacred purpose coach. I got my goddamn, my, my, my gemstones, courtesy of Karma Bliss. Salute to Debbie Brown. Come on, I got bro. all of that shit. I'm burning. Your Come on. I'm, I'm lighting incense. I got that goddamn uh, Badu pussy incense. Wait, what? That Badu pussy, baby. Yo, I don't you know got if, some? I don't know if you can have that in the fucking house, bro. My wife loves Erica Badu. I ordered it for her. Wait, what does it smell like? <laughs> My wife loves Erica Badu. I what does it smell Badu's like for real, for real? Bro. I, I was on Erica Badu's website. I spent about $400 quick. All right, I bought, so like, what, is, guys, what does Badu think her pussy smells like? First of all, your I pussy don't... shouldn't smell. Say again? Your pussy shouldn't smell. It should Girl, smell. you you're just right. told us your earring back on your clit stink. Yeah, you're... No, I didn't. You said that. You don't said that. try to do that, yo. Yeah. You said it smelled like Ishka Bibbles. No. <laughs> that's what you said. Yo, that's... I hate you. I that's want some now, said. though. Yum. You, you want what? Ishka Bibbles? Yeah, I haven't had a cheesesteak in so long. No, but for real. What is what is my dude's smell Yo, why does the smell like? of your pussy make you hungry anyway? What'd you say? <laughs> You say what? What is it? You say what does it smell like? It smells good. I love it. <laughs> so my daughter, my daughter, my oldest daughter hates the smell of incense. Period. But I like the smell of that Erica Badu. I be like, I'm taking, I'm, I'm taking, I take that shit with me if I go somewhere. I'm lighting that shit out in the backyard. I'm, I got my sage going. Like I'm into this shit for Come real. Come on, for dog, real. Like, stop it with this shit. No, nah, why? I'm out. I'm into it. You I'm into so gemstones. In you're into all of that. Sage. Into so you know, like the different types and like the different names of the gemstones and everything like that. No, but I would encourage everybody to go buy my sister Debbie Brown's book, Dropping Gems. Um, no, it's called Chris. Hold on, what the hell is the name of Dev's book? I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Dev breaks down all the meanings of all the stones. It's in, taking in her every book. ounce of energy in my body. To not trash not this. Not Gay! <laughs> it is so Yo, hard. Uh, oh, you want to take it back to the 90s and, yeah. and let, let that slur rip, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Dev's book is called Crystal Bliss. Attract love, feed your spirit, manifest your dreams. But nah, I'm into all that. I was on the phone with Yachty. And Yo, I was why is there girls that can't get a diamond ring love gemstones? Shut the 
All these heavy, bro. All these single heavy. women out here loving fucking rhinestones. Oh, and no. That is not <laughs> true. You have, but you have one too, though. Debbie's married and Say rich. What? Say yeah. what? Debbie's married and rich. Yeah, she's selling that book to a bunch of broke single ladies, bro. No, she's that's in, not. she's into mindfulness. And by the way, Beyonce just said on that new song, oh, Black here Parade. We go. Here we go. I charge my gems under the full moon. Oh shit! Yes, I charge oh, my gems shit. under the full moon. But listen, quick, quick story yeah. before we go to break because I got to I got to do a conference call real quick. It'll take like five ten minutes. Okay. My circuit your purpose coach. So I'm on the phone with her. I'm going through it. I'm somewhere between O and K, right? Because I'm going to be honest with you. This what does that mean? Me what does that mean? I don't know. That's just how I feel. I really feel like I'm somewhere between O and K. Like right? in terms of the alphabet? Like A, B, C, D, F, G, no. H, I, J, K. In terms of how I'm doing. Oh, right? the word OK. Yes. And you're in the middle of it. Yes, because the jazz shit fuck. I'm not going to lie. Jasmine shit fuck me up, right? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It bothers me at wild, weird times. Yeah, yeah. So Yachty goes, you have several trees in your backyard. Yeah. She doesn't even know I have trees. Yeah. She said, I want you to go outside. Yeah. Put your hands on the tree. Put your forehead on the tree. Pray. Breathe. Meditate. <laughs> I went out there and I did that that day. Let All me right. tell you something. I immediately felt great. So I've been doing it every day since. Nyla, my, my, my little homie, Nyla, my niece, Nyla. Nyla came over to the crib. Hold on. Can we go, this this we go back to this tree thing? We gotta go back to this tree thing. I'm the going person, back. There's the person and, that told you to do this. Me and, Nyla, me and Nyla was out there together. Excuse Bro, me. You on. never asked me. Hold on. Hold on. Ask you what? Hold on. Hug a tree? Hold on. Hold on. Is the person that told you to go do this with the tree white? Indigenous. They're indigenous. Indigenous. Okay. Yes. Yes. So they know. I got my <laughs> shoes off. I'm connected to for the any ground. Of our, for any I'm of our praying. white listeners. Please do not advise black people go hug trees or do anything with trees. No, you can hug all the trees you want in your yard. Now, I wouldn't advise you to do this in Central Park. They're going to lock your ass the fuck up. Okay? <laughs> that looks very suspicious. Yeah. All right? Well, me and Nyla together was on one tree <laughs> with our foreheads to the tree. I know my neighbor was looking like, what the fuck are these black people doing? Okay, they're doing some type of seance or something in that's the That's not what he was thinking. If he's racist, that definitely is not what he was thinking. He was like, why doesn't he? Like, hey, hey, remember that noose you made for Bubba Wallace? Could you bring that over here? So <laughs> I got a couple live ones in the backyard. <laughs> hold on. Oh, let me get on this call. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, We're going to pay, pay some bill, bills. Pay a bill, pay a bill. We're going to pay some bills, right? Yes. Hey, guys. Make sure you get your dicks hard, okay? Make sure that those dicks are hard and long. Make sure that you have control of the pipe game. If you want all these things to be true, all you got to do is blue chew. Did you see me rhyme that? I didn't even mean to rhyme that. You boy got bars. You know what I'm saying? Bars. That's right. Blue chew. Okay, same active ingredient that's in Viagra and Cialis. You take that, I'm telling you, it's the best sex of your entire life. You can give your girl the best sex of her life. Ladies, tell your man to do it. Best sex of your entire life, of his entire life. Uh, and you know what? You can get it for free. All you got to do is pay the $5 shipping. Uh, you just got to go to bluechew.com and use our promo code, idiots. Idiots with an S or idiot? idiot. With, oh, idiot. Make sure you use the promo code, idiot. Okay. And you're going to get that. I'm telling you, it's the best dick of your life. Ladies, you deserve it. Okay? Fellas, you deserve it too. It's idiots. I knew it was idiots. You use that promo code idiots. Use that promo code idiots. Bluetooth.com. Use that promo code idiots. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. You are going to get them pills for free. And then you are going to deliver dick like you've never delivered it before. Uh, I wish you best of luck. Let us know how it's going for you. Let us know how amazing the experience was. I'm telling you, it's the truth. I've used it. Al used it. I can't speak on Taylor Gang, but we're trying to get Taylor and her man to to try it out. We'll see what that what that is right there. Um, guys, that's it. Bluechew.com. Make sure you use the promo code IDIOTS. And you get that free. Just $5 shipping. Let's get back to the show. All right. We back. Um... When, so where were we? We were talking about Charlotte and you, you tree hugging. We was talking about, uh, yeah. Listen, um, hugging trees is really good for your health. And uh, I actually just 
looked it up because I never did any research on it. This is just something that my sacred purpose coach Yadi told me to do. And so I went out there and I was barefoot and I'm in my backyard and I got I got my hands on the trees and I got my forehead to the trees and I'm praying and I'm meditating and I'm taking deep breaths. And I'm not going to lie, I felt whatever energy was coming from that tree was 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 radiating through my body. And um, I, I just looked up that hugging a tree increases levels of hormone oxy. This can't be oxycotton. Ain't no oxy. It's not natural oxycotton in your body, is it right? Oxycot? I don't think so. Maybe. O-X- O-X-Y-T-O-C-I-N. How do you pronounce it? Oh, oxytocin. That? Oxytocin. So it increases levels of hormone oxytocin. This hormone is responsible for feeling calm and emotional bonding. When hugging a tree, the hormones uh, serotonin and dopamine make you feel happier. And I'm not going to front. It does. I've been doing it. I've been going out there like every day, bro. Yo. Yo. You try, you try to fuck that tree, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Be honest. Be honest, bro. If hugging it, if hugging it feels good, what? How would it feel if you slide that meat in that tree? You know how sometimes trees got them little knots on it that look like a fat puss. I would never. Do fuck you know the, the ones tree. I'm talking about? I do. I would never fuck the tree because trees can't consent. But <laughs> well, why would it be? Why would it be when just I- waving in the wind like that? <laughs> if it did, yo, 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 why would it be? Why would it? Just, yo, why, why would it be waving the wind like that? If it didn't want you to chop that thing down, oh, yo, Charlotte, oh, you, you just in my backyard, Jack. <laughs> Son, you just oh, trees don't wear clothes. Trees don't wear bark. Clothes. I guess bark is clothes, huh? Well, why would it bark be barking closed? at you if it didn't want you to climb that Ooh, tree? Ooh, I hear you, dog. You know what I'm saying? You Come want me to fall. give you this bone? You know, that's why you barking at me, Mr. Tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. come fall. Them trees look real naked, Charlotte. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm never gonna look Ooh, at you. Ooh, that's why you look a little bare. You look a little bare you look in a little the fall. Bare in the fall. Mother Nature's pimping you out to me. Ooh, you need something to warm you up, Mr. Tree? Why do you keep saying Mr.? <laughs> Yo, <what's up? laughs> why the fuck? Why every episode? Why do I have this? Oh, the mail cop. Now you got Mr. Day. Tree. <laughs> Bro, you know what you got to do? Bro, you know what you got to do? You got to put the syrup into the tree. <laughs> That's all star biz, though. Yeah. What no, is it? No, seriously. The, 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 uh, what tree do they cup. call it? Maple syrup. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not syrup. It's a word for it that's on tree trees. Tree cum, sap. Remember. Sap. Sap. Sap ain't nothing but tree sperm. That's what I'm saying. You got to put the tree sperm in there. How do you think it got in there in the first place, bro? What if you put your tongue on the tree sap? Say what? What if you put your tongue on the tree sap? Like, what if you lick the tree sap? Yeah, that's what syrup is. Maple syrup, dude. No. Put it on your pancakes, bro. Nah, syrup is from a certain tree, though. It's from the maple tree. Exactly. So if you're not a maple tree, then you don't have maple syrup. But if you're exactly. just a regular tree, you got regular syrup. You just got regular sap. Got that all sap. I'm te- all I'm telling y'all is hug a tree. Now, but- during the break, when I had to go do this uh, little Zoom meeting, Taylor called Nyla. You said you FaceTime Nyla. Yes, and she said that she was hugging the face tree. FaceTime her right now. See if we can get her on the mic. See if we can get her recorded. Maybe I could just have her call into the Zoom. No. Yeah, give, I'm gonna give her the Zoom link and then she can maybe call in. No, 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 because she she's she don't seem like she in the state to call into the Zoom. <laughs> no, she was talking fine, right? Wasn't she talking fine? She can she can call in from her phone. Yeah. Oh, she can't. Yeah, she can. It's an app, Charla. I don't know shit about technology. <laughs> like, what are you talking I about? I, I never tried it. I didn't know you could call in from the goddamn Zoom. I had no idea. <laughs> I'm gonna send her now. Hey, NBA coming back, baby. Yo, what you think about it? I, I'm cool with it. I'm like, I, I don't have a problem with it. Do you, think you, know, they're, you think they're going to use Corona Warfare? What is Corona Warfare? Coughing and shit? I'm saying, like, if you know that you got the Lakers in the first round, are you going to do whatever it takes to give King James that Rona? You're going to send some Corona wow. his way? Wow. You know, Did he orders delivery. That? Like, if they could send some... Some poisonous pizza to MJ. You don't think they could send some uh, some uh, Bio- Corona? So you're saying they would use biological warfare? I'm just saying. How bad do you want to win? Very interesting. Very if you're interesting. not cheating, you're not trying hard enough. Is that what they said? 
I wonder if why does that I ever wonder, work with marriage? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the NBA is going to be honest with players that are asymptomatic though. Ooh. Because if, because if LeBron tests positive for Corona and he's asymptomatic, you really think they're going to quarantine Bron for Not, 14 days? Nope. Get the fuck out of nope. here. Nope. You think they're going to really quarantine Kawhi Leonard for 14 days? Hell nope. no. Nope. Are they going to quarantine James Harden? No. You're going to have to really be showing signs, passing out like our good brother D.L. Hughley. What happened and, to uh, D.L., bro? Um, DL's interesting. DL's interesting because it's uh, I've I've had that before. I've been dehydrated, dehydration and, and, and exhausted. Yeah, you yeah. know. But but he got he tested positive for Corona. But that so, wasn't the reason why he passed out, right? He was just like traveling a lot, dehydrated. I don't even think he's been traveling a lot. I think that might have been his first show back because we've been all quarantined. All this shit yeah. just started get. All this shit just started back. Yo, I feel better, for, DL. I prayed for That's DL. I prayed for DL one because I love DL. He really is. He calls me his daughter. That's that's her stepdad? No, he calls me his daughter, though, and that's him because it reminds me of his daughter. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I prayed for DL, one, because DL is hilarious, and I think DL is a, is a brilliant mind, and I, and I love DL, but also I prayed for him because he got a quarantine in Nashville, bro. Like, it's very important to know where you test positive for coronavirus. Bruh. Don't test po- Don't even go for a test in a city you don't want to be stuck in for the next 14 years. If you like... <laughs> White girls with blonde hair and fat asses. Nashville is the place to be, my friend. Nashville is really? one of the most slept on cities on the planet. Well, <laughs> Nashville's incredible. I know. I mean, listen, I rock what with Nashville. My man Bobby Say Bones again? is in Nashville. We call fat asses. Taylor getting all jealous. I'm not kidding. Of these uh, white Nubian queens and their fat ass donkeys that they got on the back of them. <laughs> that whole challenge where the guy stands on the girl's back. Started with white women. <laughs> Stop. Yes, it did. Yeah. It did. It did start with a white woman. It started woman. with white women it and their white fat woman. asses. White women got high, fat asses that we've been stepping on for years. <laughs> so, Cash, so you like Nashville? Yo, Nashville's this shit. Word. Nashville is an amazing party city because from what I experienced there, and people in Nashville probably tell me I'm wrong, for what I experienced there is like, it doesn't have that kind of like, classism, elitism that New York does in the party scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, listen, my, my man Bobby Bones lives in Nashville. Uh, Young Buck been screaming Cashville, Tennessee forever. That's right. You know what I mean? That's mm. Young Buck. I know a few people from Nashville now that I think about Yo, it. Yo, Nashville is a fun fucking city, bro. He might have made that shit up. Just to stay there for Just 14 days, Just to stay days, right? there. I mean, that's a great way to get away from your wife, bro. You say you got yeah, corona. Yeah, but see that, that but that's Stay the there. That, fuck white that, girls with the hee-haw. But that's what I meant when I said you got to, <laughs> you know, I, I prayed for him because like Nashville, I don't want to be away from nobody for 14 days. Especially, you know what I mean? I just went there to do comedy at Zany's for the weekend. Yeah. I don't want to be here for the next 14 days. Yeah, but what if you could be like smothered in white women? Smothered in them. Black no. Lives Matter. Say what? That's right. Black, black lives matter. matter. That's true. And DL, black men DL, don't cheat. Listen, and and black men cheat. don't cheat. DL would let That's down all so facts. Many. But white DL women w- bleach their buttholes. So sometimes you got to check that out. And then Nashville is the capital of that. A bleach butthole? When bleach they butthole. bleach it, is it just the same color as what they are? Bro, their buttholes look like church wafers. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you thinking we started <laughs> eating them? You know what I mean? That's what we do. DL, DL could not, if DL got caught with a white woman right now, man. Oh my God. But why do you think that DL's be chin hair is got, so, yeah, is you, so uh, white? That would be a letdown. He eating that, <laughs> eating you, that church wafer. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm joking. You, by the way, I'm totally listen, joking. DL. DL, if DL get caught with a white woman right now. It'd man, be a you problem. Have can, you, you have to cancel some of the protests. Wait, why? Yeah, because he's so pro black. Like, he can be pro black and no, be with a white woman. He like is woman? always, no, but like. Not in 2020. He's putting. What about up, Jordan Peele? You don't follow him on huh? Instagram. Jordan Peele. He's, huh? You know who know who he is? Jordan Peele, the director. Yeah, isn't he? You know, he's he's t- he got all those movies about how that was a movie, bro. He ain't really with no white woman. He's yes, with a white yes, woman. Yes, His he wife is, is he white. With a white woman. What happened to Nyla? I saw Nyla up just now. She didn't come on. Why are you switching the topic? <laughs> huh? Wait, did she, oh, she didn't come on. So. Yeah, she was huh? up there. I didn't see her pop in. Yo, look at Dwayne got the sexy view. Huggy bear. Yeah. I want to see what Nyla, I want to see what Nyla thinks about the tree hugging, man. 
He's ready. But now I am ready for the NBA to come back. I saw uh, Eric, uh, 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 what's the what's the kid name? Bradley from the Lakers. What's Avery name? Bradley. A- Avery Bradley said he's not playing this year. Yo, turn uh, your computer a little bit so you're more in the center. He said yeah, he's not, he said he's uh, not playing this year, so they bringing in Jr. Smith. I heard. Okay. I don't know, man. I think whoever uh, stayed in shape throughout the three month quarantine is who's going to end up being the, the NBA Finals champion. And I'm gonna tell you something else. Yeah. All of y'all out there that said the NBA. It's going to be a distraction from the protests. That's me. Turn your goddamn TVs off. I'm boycotting, bro. Don't even turn a game on. I'm not. Why I'm do you want the NBA back so bad? I don't want the NBA back so bad. I just don't think that it's, it will be a distraction to anything that's going on out here. In fact, if you look at the way the media is going right now, the media has already kind of moved away from, you know, making the protests mm, the primary yeah. thing yeah. that it's talking about. Good point. So NBA, I'm back the, in. The NBA would come and put and, and, and put light on it again. The Yo, NBA that's a would, good point. He, you, you got me back. I'm watching, bro. But I'm you don't think it's be stronger. I'm, bro. I'm just saying you don't think it'll be stronger because a lot of, especially the white owned teams and everything, they yeah. want NBA back. So this is their part of for them to like use their power and be like, no, we want all this shit before we go into playing again. I don't think y'all know how government works. Yeah. But Taylor. you don't think they but I'm saying you don't think yeah, they want to. You yeah, don't think I, that the government, I know all of them watch ball. The like, only ba- thing stronger than balls. government is a white woman's ass. Listen, we're, 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 That's we're, we're, it. as we're recording this right now, we're recording yeah. this and the Senate hearing is on right now. You know what they're in the Senate debating right now? Hillary Clinton. No, they're debating police reform. Ain't no uh, NBA owners in there. Ain't no NBA players in there. They're literally, mm-hmm. if you turn the TV on right now, you will see the Senate debating police reform right now. Mm. Ain't no, and, like I said, there's no NBA owners, there's no NBA players. They're like, what do y'all want these people to do? But I'm just saying, <laughs> because it's so, like, so many people like the sport, they could put a stance in making it more powerful where it's like, okay, for, if we gotta get the, for us to get the NBA back, we gotta get this done. Like, I don't know, I just feel like it'll be more Listen, powerful. They, there's not, first of all, no police reform is gonna get passed until well after November. You know? It's not going to be Tim Scott's bill that gets passed no time soon. It's not going to be the Democrats' Justice and Policing Act that gets no time soon. This is going to be a political talking point until well after November. They could give a fuck about the NBA, the NFL, or whoever else. Like, no. That's why I said everybody plays different positions. Everybody does different things. Like, we're looking for NBA players and owners to be our policymakers. And to be the people that create this legislation and push this legislation through. Like, that's not how any of this works. I think that people think that anybody with money, anybody with money has a say in what goes on in the whole entire fucking world. That's how it works. <laughs> if, if you got a lot of money, you got to say about what's going on. Yeah, maybe. Because these politicians need money to run. They need money to campaign. They can't win without campaigns, so they can accept that money. And trust me, those NBA owners have already put in their bids. The NBA owners that are behind these campaigns, they already put in their bids for what they want. Yes, and they want it, and they want to get back to business. So, and and, and they're gonna get back to business regardless. You know why? Why? Because it's not a strike. There's no right. strike going what on. Do you We're say, like this is a strike. What do you say about the players that don't want to play though? That's their prerogative. They have every reason not to play because um, they can say it's a liability. They don't want to catch coronavirus. You know what I'm they, saying? Do they still like, get paid though? I don't know. See, that's the thing, and that's what the other thing that we don't forget. These. Those guys have a job. Right. Like, they're under contract. Like, they work for somebody. So I don't know how that shit works, but I know that you can't just show up because you don't want to show up. I right. know that if you're a player and you show you you don't show up just because you don't want to show up, you know what they start doing to you, right? What do they do? Finding you. <laughs> they start finding your ass. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that would work in this situation. I mean, clearly they're giving people the option, right? Right. Because people, some people are choosing to opt out. So I don't know. I don't know if they get paid or not. I just know that um, I, I just don't think the NBA would, would be a distraction at all. And if the NBA would be a distraction, then Major League Baseball should be a distraction. The NFL should be a distraction. By the way, for everybody saying that teams are, are organizations to, to sit out, the NFL is definitely the people who should do that. Is definitely what? Yeah, they should. They're they're 
definitely the people that should do that. Yeah, they're right. If the if the, the, the NFL wants to make changes in the actual NFL, yeah. now is the opportunity for those black players in the league to definitely. Yeah, you're right. You're right. More so than the more so than the NBA. Like y'all should be giving that energy to the NFL. Yeah. Are they going to? Do you think Collins gonna end I up have, on a team? I, Isn't he part of a thing now? Say um, what? I put it. Right. There was rumors he was going to get a tryout for the for the Chargers, I think. The Chargers. Yeah. He's on the board of director, directors at Medium. Right. 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 I mean, yeah. The Lions, the, the Lions ownership said they'll support the coach and GM if they want Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it is what it is. Detroit Go Lions, out there. Detroit, he should the, audition. The, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, he should audition. He should have a tryout. And if you kill the trial, you should be on a team. That's just, that's sports. The great thing about sports is they're merit-based. The great thing about sports is if you can, you are so good at a sport, it doesn't matter what color you are, what race you are, what fucking religion. I mean, hopefully anymore, obviously there's stories of people that have been blackballed because of those things, but that's the reason why we love sports and why we're drawn to sports. It's the great equalizer. I just want to ask one simple question. Yeah. If the NBA coming back would be a distraction, why wouldn't Colin be assigned to a team and playing in the NFL? Collins should play in the NBA. Timmy, shut up. Man. Yo, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. You got to support it, dude. For real. Taylor, I, I want to I wanna answer to that question. Oh, wait. You Taylor, said if what? You think the NBA would be a distraction. Yep. But you want Colin to get signed to an NFL team. Yup. Um, I don't I agree with you with what you said about Colin before, saying that is he's bigger than the NFL at this point. Like, but do you? But but if Colin came back, would you consider that a distraction? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see that energy? That okay. energy was kept right there. So you don't want him to have a job. <laughs> that energy was kept. No, right I didn't there. say that either. But would be? I'm gonna say it would be a bad distraction because hopefully he's he's still doing the same thing as in like you know. Oh, you kneeling. mean kneeling? Yeah, like in everything else. Oh, so you mean by kneeling at the game, he would bring awareness to the protests that are going on in the street. I knew, I know thing. what you're about to say. Same but thing. But he's been doing that, though. Stop. No, 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 no. He's I'm been doing saying. that. Oh. I knew you got to turn oh, that around. Oh, see what yeah. he did right there? <laughs> see what he saying. did right there? Hugged you like a tree. That's what happened. <laughs> Put you to sleep. Come on. Let's, let's do some Ask an Idiot. Or do we have shit you don't care about next week? Which one is What's the shit that um, we won't care about next care week, about, though? though? Um, do you guys want to talk about um, Eminem going what towards... Do you do? He... Made a verse dissing um, Revolt TV, like Diddy and all that. No, I thought and he I likes the... Diddy or something. That was old. Uh, this, I don't this give week. a fuck, man. I remember when, when when you used to get dissed by Eminem and that shit used to mean something. I remember yeah. being a being a, a young man in the late nineties, and you know you would hear Eminem diss these people, and you'd be like, "Oh shit!" And for the past, Eminem has mentioned me in like four songs. Yeah, and nobody gives. A fuck. Yeah, <laughs> like no, nah, I mean nobody. Get, like when I say nobody, like I, he, his stands don't even jump on me and be like Eminem killed you. It's just like nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, it like, is nobody cares. He's yeah, mentioned like four that? different songs. Why is that? Like he's so skilled. I but... think sometimes um sticks run their course. Say that again. I think sometimes sticks run their course. Stick. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, what I said. Yeah, whatever you said, I don't know. <laughs> the st- the yeah. stick from the tree I was hugging. Yeah. yeah, I just think I just think sometimes they run their course. And like, you know, Eminem, Eminem has dissed so many people. It's just like, oh, that's just what M does. Yeah, I agree. And you know also, I mean? like, he feels he doesn't longer feel representative of like a cultural sentiment. And when I say culture, I'm not talking about like when black people go, the culture. I'm talking about like what the zeitgeist, like what people are feeling at a time. Like when Eminem came out, he kind of really captured angst. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah, people yeah, jumped yeah, yeah. on the angst. Same thing like when Nirvana came out, they captured angst. And like you could um when Sam, was Sam Cook, he, like yeah. Sam Cook came out, he captured a feeling of soul that people had, right? So it's like right now you see him, and it's the same thing as like watching Seinfeld do stand up. It's like, am mm-hmm. I watching something that should be happening 30 years ago? Like what? <laughs> like you have to make it, this relevant to what's happening now. I'm I'm watching like a caricature of itself. Yeah, and and back then he was rebelling against pop culture, right? And we could all agree boy bands were corny. You know, yeah. Britney, Spears was, Britney Spears was corny. Like, that, yeah. was, that was easy targets, right? Uh, but it's like now, it's like, eh, I like Joe Budden. 
Yeah. Like, eh, I like Charlemagne, M. Eh, you know, and and, and yeah. we've never seen M go at a formidable opponent. That's true too. Rap wise. That's that's fair also, but I think another thing another thing going on here is that like Eminem was taking shots at people that we all hated or disliked, but yes. we didn't really have the platform to take shots against them. Now we have yes. memes. Now yes. we have Twitter. Now we have Instagram. Yeah, 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 we yeah, say how yeah, we feel yeah. about famous people every yeah. single day. Yeah, absolutely. Like you absolutely. just having a clever line is not going to be more clever than yeah. something you see on Reddit. And 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 back then it was shocking, right? It was shocking when you first saw um, somebody say, uh, fuck you, Britney Spears. and Because yeah. it was on MTV. It was on their platform. This platform that all yeah. these people thrived. So to see this guy standing by Dr. Dre not giving a fuck in that way, it was cool for a while. And he's nice. Like, there's no question his skill level. Like, the skill of rapping, never, he's nice. Never never take anything from him rap-wise. Never. I've never taken it. The I, I, only thing I've ever said about Lee him, Lee's. he's not my cup of tea. Yeah, you but like, there's Lee plenty Lee of rapper. No, even the skill, like, rapping is almost, is probably the least important part of rapping. You know what I mean? Like, Takashi 6 ix not a great rapper. Some of the intellectual. Yeah, I'm talking about actually like rhyming the words is the least important part yeah. about it. It's like building up the character and building the persona and creating the nah, interest. that's like, old though. That, that, it used to be, it was a time where it was really all about lyrics. No, no. And by I the get, way, it's st- it still really is though. Even though, t- even though back then, that time when it was about lyrics, they were still larger than life personalities. Yeah, but they, yeah, they couldn't help it. Like Tupac couldn't help but be a larger than life personality. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if Eminem- Tupac's a lyricist though, fam. Um, you, could, you consider Tupac a lyricist? Like I'll a, tell you, I, I I'll tell you why. I didn't back then, but I'll tell you why I do now. Okay. Because because his 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 bars have aged so well. Like it's things that you can put on from Tupac 20 years ago that sound relevant to today, like right yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? Um, so for that reason, yes. I back then I didn't think he was a lyricist. It's, back then I would I would never compare him. I thought Nas was better, I thought Biggie was better. Um, like just from a technical standpoint like rhyming bars jay-z yep. all of those guys but his music has aged so well that you gotta say yo this is this guy's a lyricist yeah Not like too. just because the lyrics don't seem as like complex or complicated as those other guys if they stay around and have lasting yeah, effect yeah, then you have to give yeah. credit to the lyrics themselves. so i yeah. see that that's a different yeah. way of looking at it yeah yeah does it still does it still matter that's like with stand-up right like yeah yo does this joke still is it still relevant to this day yeah it's like reason, this this joke might not be crafted in the perfect way but the sentiment still the sticks sentiment and you're like it, yes. yo that's fire chris yeah. rock n words versus black people it's right. not going nowhere dave Chappelle is doing callbacks to goddamn killing me softly 20 killing yeah. me softly came out of 2000 yeah yeah yeah. and yeah, the yeah. ja rule shit still stands because of social media though but still yeah as i'm saying like yeah it still matters what's the next give me, give me another one taylor shit we won't care about um, next week I mean, more political, like Trump's at uh, Tulsa, or that the black guards are not allowed to guard the guy that killed uh, George Floyd. That was wild. Wait, what's this? That was wild. Uh, they, 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 the black guards, they wouldn't let the black guards uh, escort Derek Chauvin, the guy that murdered um, George Floyd, the cop. Why? The reason I thought, I mean, because I guess they thought they that think- he would have some preconceived prejudices, some preconceived biases. <laughs> it's like America, do you ever think about that when it comes to white people and <laughs> black prison? I mean, white officers and black uh, prisoners? People. People, do you yeah, ever yeah, think yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah. what the fuck? Now yeah. all of a sudden you care about prejudice and bias? Yeah, yeah. If these black cops got a little bias towards him and they want to rough him up a little bit, it's understandable, <laughs> all right? Everybody on, on this planet would understand whether it was a black cop or white cop that roughed up that guy, why they did that. What we don't understand is why you do that to black people that you don't even give a, that you don't even know. Like, you're just doing it because the person is black? That's different. Yeah. When you're just doing it because of the color of somebody's skin? That's different. When you're doing it because this motherfucker actually did something? Come on, man. Yeah, it makes Come sense. Come on, man. You think they don't rough up child molesters? You think they don't rough up child rapists? <laughs> yeah, child, you, don't right. th- you don't think you don't think they fucked them up? Yeah, and would anybody care? He ain't trying to defund no, no police. No you find I out they, they beat the, the shit out of a fucking child rapist. You think yeah. they did the same thing to Dylan Roof too? Probably. 
What do you mean? Like trying to make the black guards not protect Dylan Roof or whatever. I have no idea. They, he got caught in North Carolina. There was no black officers. It was all white officers. Did you see the picture? Burgers. You see the picture of Derek Chauvin and the picture of the guy they have in custody now and people saying they're different people? I'm not listening. You ain't see it? I'm not listening. I'm just saying, bro. The <laughs> ears look that. different. People I pay attention crazy, to yo. ears. People <laughs> are so crazy on the internet. The narratives that people come up with on the internet are so fucking wild to me, bro. What do you mean? Like it's the, the shit people can make themselves believe is so crazy to me. Yo, the ears like, look different, bro. Because you know what it is? And, and I thought about this, right? What is it? In certain situations like that, you don't think the cop's going to ever get arrested. So if you're on social media saying, that's they going to never arrest this cop. America's this and America's that and yada, yada, yada. And then they arrest the cop. And then they charge the cop. Instead of just admitting, damn, I can't believe it. I was wrong. You got to pivot. You gotta this pivot. is not him. That's not him, bro. <laughs> this is not That's him. not him. Sometimes Yo, you got to a- pivot. You never done that when you get caught cheating? Cheating? I, I, ain't got, I, don't, I don't even know if che- getting caught cheating feels like no more. Bro, what? I haven't gotten caught cheating. If, you got caught cheating or something? No, but I'm just saying <laughs> back in the You've day. You've mentioned that a few times? <laughs> bro, back in the day. First of all, I've never been caught cheating. But back in the day, you know what I mean? I, I got I caught cheating I don't, once, I and I just told I her it wasn't me. I don't even know what that feels like. I don't know what it feels like to get caught cheating no more. What I'm saying is, if you go with the, it's not you, she'll be like, what are you doing? And you just go, I don't know who you think I am. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's it, bro. It, that, that strategy <laughs> could, could not, not work. <laughs> who she fucked? Yo, yeah. <laughs> what are what? you talking about? <laughs> I'll be like, Andrew who? Taylor, hit me again. Hit us. Um, the Ja Rule uh, commercial. I love that shit. Ja the man. Ja, so ja really front- is the man, I'm yo. so tired of y'all fronting on fucking Ja Rule. Ja's the fucking man. He's the man. man, but yo, 50 needs to calm down, bro. Why, like, 50, 50 is another one. He's about to enter the, like, Eminem realm of just, like, we no. get it. We no, well, get not it. With, not with Ja. Not with Ja. 50 can beef with Ja for the rest of his life, and I totally understand it. I think that we're forgetting 50 and Ja Rule actually had a fist fight in front of a hotel. Who Murder won? Inc. Act- Murder, I, I, I don't know. Murder, Inc. actually ran up in a studio and stabbed 50 Cent at one point. Really? Uh, I didn't know. Uh, yeah. Murder, Inc. They got, Murder, Inc. actually, they... The I know reason they 50, tried to kill him. The reason him, 50 but... got hit up nine times, it's yeah. like, if you try to kill me a couple times, man... It's probably going to be fuck you for life. Oh, shit. I didn't know it was like that. Yo, keep yeah. on going, bro. And matter of fact, <laughs> fuck Monte Cristo's or whatever that restaurant is. <laughs> fuck everything, yo. So Did Ja Rule start it then? He started the beef? I, I don't even remember how they beef started. I just know that they fought in a hotel. It was in front of a hotel in Atlanta. They got into a fist fight. And then they were in a studio. They all got charged for that shit. They all, like all Ja and Irv. I don't know if it was Ja and Irv, but it was Murder Inc. members got charged with that shit. Stabbing 50. And then when 50 got shot. And they tried, after all that, they tried to blackball him out of the music industry. Nah, bro. That's fuck you for life, dude. Yes. That's, I'm, I'm never mad at Fifth. When I see when I see Fifth going at job, I'm like, look at my petty cancer brother <laughs> holding a fucking grudge Let's forever. Go. Let's go. I don't have a problem with it. You yeah. try to do me like that. You try to take me out. Fuck you for life. Fuck you for life. I, fuck you. God bless you. Not even God bless you, though. Nah, I say God bless you. God, Will I, you? I, I, Say God bless you. Now I ain't gonna say no shit like I don't wish you no harm. <laughs> D- dividing up the God blessing, dividing up the well wishes, man. Funny to me. Is it true? I'm not, I'm not gonna lie and be like, I, I, I wish the best for him. No, I ain't gonna go that far. But God Fuck bless you. But God bless. You. There we go. All right, that's, that's enough. It. All right, anything that's else, it. Taylor? That's it. And by the way, that's from a TV show. By the way, what? That Ja Rule shit he did. Oh, yeah. He was uh, pitching a show. It's a T. No, it's an actual TV show. It I, comes on TBS. Look that shit up, Taylor. Oh, I thought, it, it, was a, I thought it was a trailer. No, nah, it's an actual TV show. It's, 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 it's coming on. It's called, um, damn, I just saw that shit. Why the fuck can't I remember the name? It's called. Uh, Rule's Guy Rule commercial is actually from a new TV it's show. It's called Celebrity Show Off. Yeah. Yes. It, and it comes on June 23rd on TBS. And. Yeah, that whole the whole point of that commercial was for them to they all had to make some content from home in order to go viral or some shit like that. So Ja won. Annie got that fucking Greek restaurant mad promotion in the process. So 
Salute to Ja. Let's do some asking idiot, Taylor. Let's go. What do we got? That would that uh, was shit you don't care about next week. Uh, whatever the fuck. What's it called? I don't even care about it now. <laughs> so I, I didn't even have to wait till next week to not care about what we just talked about. Um, should uh, this is from Justy John Jonathan? Should Karens be required to seek mental help when they do Karen things? Should Karens be decided to seek mental health when they do Karen things? Should they be what? Do they seek mental health? Yeah. Like, I mean, it- if, if you are suffering from mental illness, you should seek mental health. I don't know if all these Karens are suffering from mental illness. They might be suffering. Do you from, think racism, racism is a mental illness? Though? Uh, I don't think racism is a mental illness. No. Um, I don't think you're like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't want to. Because yeah, that I don't, absolves, to me, exactly. I think, yeah, like, I think that exactly. people with mental illness can be racist, but I don't think racism is a mental illness because it absolves the personal accountability of deciding to have those views about someone and not challenging those views if you already have them to see if they're not exactly true. So I don't want to let motherfuckers say, off the hook. Yeah, I don't want to let people off the hook, but it, it is a part of me that thinks hating somebody simply because of the color of their skin is fucking insane. Oh, you have to be low IQ. You have to be yeah, low yeah, IQ. Yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. be high mm-hmm. IQ and be a uh, racist, right? Like you have to be stupid enough where you believe these things dogmatically. You don't question them at all. And you have no personal experience with these folks. And that's why. So it's a very, it's a low IQ behavior, but being like, just unfortunately being born dumb doesn't mean that you're necessarily mentally ill. And mm-hmm. there are a lot of dumb people who are not racist. Our people, man, you know, some people, uh, I think human beings, we have to believe in something. Like, it's just our natural nature to believe in something. Like, there's never been a, 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 a generation, a civilization of people who didn't believe in something, mm. right? Right. And I think that um, sometimes when somebody can make someone a villain or make somebody a boogeyman, it gives you something to believe in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate this group of people because this group of people does X, Y, and Z. They're they're the villains. They're ruining the world. Whatever. It just gives you something to believe in, right? Yeah, and it, and it probably justifies uh, the position you're in in life. You know, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah. reason I don't have success or the reason I don't have this is because these motherfuckers are holding me down, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, that was Hitler's whole idea with the Jews, right? He's like, these are the people and these are the reasons why Germany's struggling and we need to get them out of it, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah, of course. That's I thought, I thought about from. that with religion, too. I, I, I don't I don't know if you have to have a low emotional IQ or you just have to have a, a, a desire to believe in something really believe in religion. Cause I was, I was talking about that story that happened in um, Arizona where the church is this mega church in Arizona and they had the air conditioners or the air filters. And they said the air filter can kill coronavirus. Like it can kill 99.9% of coronavirus or some shit like that. So just to get everybody to come into the church and feel good about coming back to church after the quarantine. And I was like, yo, that was, that's such an easy thing to pull on church people. Just think about all the other shit they believe in. They believe that a, a white man walked on water. They believe that a, a, a white man took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 fucking people. How can you be a caterer and a Christian? You can't. Can, you gotta believe, can you, bro. How, how can you be a caterer and a Christian? You're a caterer. Yeah. You know five loaves of bread and two fish can't feed 5,000 people. But you believe it when somebody tells you in that church. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's because they just have a a need to believe in something or because they have low IQ, emotional IQ. I don't IQ. think I don't, it, I don't think it's low IQ. I think it's uh there we all have a need to believe. And I think that like, you know, maybe your level of curiosity changes the way you look at the stories. Like maybe instead of looking at the stories, like how did he functionally feed 5,000 people with these two loaves of bread. Like maybe there's another message in the story. I'm not that familiar with it, but maybe there's a message about how to feed people. And like when you have something to give it to others. And like, for me, that's what I look at, at the Bible as like, just, this is a, uh, yeah. a rule book for life. And all these stories are examples of how you can do things in life. They'll actually make you feel better and live a better life. So, the Bible is a book of subtweets. A book of what? The Bible is a book of subtweets. Subtweets. Yeah. You just got to decode it. It's just a bunch of subtweets. It's like some of this shit may, you may read and it might hit you. It might apply to you like, yeah. oh, he is talking to me. 
Yeah, yeah. Taylor, give us give us another one. Um, Ask Nitty. From... You're not saying their names though. I did. Yeah, you did. Oh, you did. Um, right. A underscore A Ron Lee thirteen said, "If you could bring back one historical figure from the dead, who would it be, and why?" If you bring one historical figure from the dead, mm -hmm. who would it be, and why? Hey, hey, hey. That is a trick. Well, I got, I got two. I got two. Um. Okay. Go, Charlotte. Um. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad and uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. Um. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was the greatest transformer of men and women that I've, I've, I've ever witnessed personally. I mean, it's, 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 it's not the most, you know, it's not the, the most easiest task to take somebody who was in prison for whatever crime twenty years and have them come home and turn them into a totally different person. It's not the easiest task to bring people off the street and like, you know, make them actual civilized human beings. Like just the nation of Islam was really that it was a nation. Like if you know the history of the nation of Islam, a lot of the things that black people are attempting to do, or have done in the past, they were doing like they had their own businesses. They had their own communities. Like they had their own thing. And the, and the other thing about honorable Elijah Muhammad that I love so much is I love people that create other legends. Like to me, he, you create Muhammad Ali, you create Malcolm X, you create the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Bro, that's what kind of go to you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, cause, cause bo he's got two students that are definitely more popular than him, that definitely get quoted more than him, that definitely get looked upon as these legendary figures more than him. Than to a lot of people, right? Like if you know, you know. But if you don't know, you'd be like Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X. It's just you'll just rank them like that over the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But for me, man, that brother was something, something serious. And uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. For, for the same reasons, like he would be so interesting now because he is a guy who actually got legislation changed. Right. The thing that y'all are asking NBA players to do. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was actually on the front lines <laughs> doing, it. doing, you know what I mean? So it's just like, uh, yeah, he'd be, he'd be very interesting. Now, the salute to Justin Richburg. Justin Richburg created this cartoon mm -hmm. that had, Justin, had Justin. me interviewing Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. I just thought that was so ill. Yeah. And, and I'm mad it only got like 30,000 views right now. I thought that was going to rip harder, but... Um, Oh, so I'm not gonna post anything else on my page. Like, uh, <laughs> it goes, it, it it moves the way I think that it should move. I'm I'm that guy. I'm not putting nothing else on my page until y'all appreciate that goddamn Justin Richburg cartoon. I'm gonna let it sit right there. Last but not. What about you, Schultz? Who you would bring back? Oh, yeah. I don't know, and I'd like to think more on it because I don't want to okay. waste the answer. But I True. don't know. I know that. Do you think he'll be a comedian? I, I think part of me is like, I'd love to see Patrice now and like, just be able to like talk to him and like Patrice O'Neill that is, and like see how he would synthesize what's happening in the world today. And, uh, yeah, but there's, I really like to think on that. Maybe next week I'll have a good answer for that. Yeah. I don't want to just throw that out there. Yeah. True. Last one. Um, if y'all want, right. Yeah. yeah okay. Last one. So junior Williams wants to know who'd make a better president, you Schultz or Sharla? Ooh, good question. <laughs> Charlotte, you make a better president. No, uh, I say Schultz. Oh, you guys are so cute. <laughs> no, I would say Schultz. We're going to both run as vice president. Yo, that's what we should do. <laughs> we should both run as vice president, no president, and then there's just no president in America. <laughs> I, I, that's a, I, I, would, I think Schultz would. I, I, like, I like the way Schultz executes. Um, I like the way Schultz thinks. I think Schultz might be a little, I honestly think Schultz might be a little more fair than me. Hmm. Interesting. I think you, um, I think you're an amazing communicator and you uh, get messages to people incredibly quickly. Like you, there's no fat on your messaging. So it's just, mm -hmm. this is how I feel. This is how you probably feel. Here it is. And I think that's really important, especially now when you have all this clutter, like there's all this clutter about what's going on. It doesn't matter. Coronavirus. Uh, th this many deaths, that many deaths. Da, 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 da. And the Charlemagne approach is just like, can I go outside? You don't yeah, want to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Can I go outside? Yes? Yeah. All right, everybody, you can go outside. End of the conference. So yeah, I feel like see, you're that's... really effective at communicating. 
And um, now, obviously, the tricky thing would be for you is that it is so important to you right now You're up the, to uplift black people, right? And to be mm-hmm. president of the United States, you would have to, at some point, convince people that lifting up black people lifts up everybody. That would be the trickiest part, but uh, I think you just, I think you'd be, you could definitely do it. Well, that's what I said. That's why I said I think you, you probably be a little bit more fair than me because I'm going to stand in front of America and say, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say verbatim. I don't want to, I don't want to, hold on. I don't want to, I don't want to miss this moment. I'm going to tell you what I would say verbatim. Okay. Okay. Verbatim. I would say, once upon a time, there was a supervillain named Thanos. <laughs> and Thanos once said, as long as there are those who remember what was, there will always be those who cannot accept what can be. With that said, we're killing all white supremacists effective immediately. <laughs> Okay, we're killing anybody who wants to hold on to the Confederate flag and Confederate memorials immediately. If you are not able to adjust, are you able to adjust? We need to know if you're able to adjust. If you are not able to adjust, (laughs) that got to go, baby. We don't got time. We trying to we trying to move into the 21st century and we trying to move into the 21st century fast and swiftly. What are you holding on to? Right. What are you holding on to? You're already rooting for the fucking losers. You don't want the statues of the slave defenders to come down. What? See, all jokes aside, seriously, I'm, I'm asking racists this real question. What are you holding on to? Like, what is being racist doing for you? They think they're losing something probably. Like, they're on... What are you losing? You're, you're white. I know. <laughs> if you're white in America and you're not winning, it is your fucking fault. Maybe they've got nothing besides that. And maybe they've been sold this lie that just because they're white, they're better than the people that aren't. And they're holding on to that because they have absolutely nothing left. You know what I would tell them? Get out the fucking South and move to Manhattan for a summer. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Once you move to Manhattan for a summer as a white person, you'll get all the confidence you fucking want to go back and take over the world. No, but you know what's interesting? Uber kind of took the last thing white people had away from them. What is that? Like just getting cabs. Like if at the end, like like if at the end of the day, you were like, man, being white ain't shit anymore. I'm broke. I got nothing. But you just hailed that cab. You're like, still got it, baby. Shut the fuck up. But then Uber came around. They're like, fuck it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Smash that shit away from me. Oh. So, so what do you do? So quick. So what do you what do you do if you're in the south? You don't catch no cabs in the south. Yeah. You can call an Uber. That's why they're so racist. Damn. Yeah. You might be right, bro. (laughs) Seriously, I'm just like, it's it's something to that, though. It's something to, this is all I got. I'm a poor white guy, poor white woman. I don't have shit else. Yeah. But 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 to think I'm better than you. Yeah. And the only reason I think I'm better than you is because society tells me I am. Yeah. You start reminding people that they poor white trash. They don't want to hear that they shit. They don't want to hear guess it. What? And by the way, you embrace being poor white trash as long as you're better than that nigger. I won't agree with that statement, but yeah. <laughs> I think. <laughs> but yo, for real, I think that's it, man. I think once, I think the way to explain it to these people is like, yo, minorities being equal to you does not make you less than them. It's just that it's fucking simple. Equal. <laughs> like, like, what like, 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 there, what, 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 equal. Like, like, there's no, like, fuck what Terry Crews is talking about. Yeah. There's no such thing as black supremacy, and right. there never will be. Right. We don't want to be better than anyone. I have a question. We just, we just want to get treated equally. And by yeah. the way, those of us who already think we better than people, we the winners. <laughs> <laughs> Do shows you, why do you shows you shows you don't think you better than all, all other comedians? Yeah, but that well not all, but uh, all, most. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you all, got all you, except you one. Probably got, you all probably except got one. Your, you probably got your side. Okay, one. That's good. All right, that's even better. So it's like, but yeah, but it's uh, obviously respect to goat Dave Chappelle, and and I'm we're just talking about living right, but like, but yeah, it's just. I hear you, man. You need to have that confidence. Now, gotta have the confidence. Now, I don't think that because I'm white. That's the thing. It's like motherfuckers need to start having confidence on shit besides the thing they're born with. And nobody thinks that you're a goat because you're white. 
Exactly. You know you're good. Exactly. You got to have merit at the end of the day. Nobody that's sees it. a white person. They're like, man, that's you are it. white, bro. Like, on the, uh, killing it. it. That's it. On yeah. the radio, they like, yo, that motherfucker there is a beast on that goddamn radio. That's, that's it. it. And you know why? Because I thought I was 20 years ago. Yeah. 20 years ago, I was like, I'm betting all these motherfuckers. Yo, maybe that's what we need People to do. People see confidence, Maybe we though. need to stop. Maybe we, maybe the way to like help white supremacists not be racist is to be like, yo, have some confidence in yourself, bro. <laughs> bro, maybe that's yo, what it is. Son, no, for real, yo. Get yo. your self-esteem yo. up, man. Like, yo, Schultz, I think you hit it on the head. I think that's what it is, yo. You got low self-esteem. Stop being so insecure. It like, is, that though. only thing you got is the thing that you had nothing to do with. Like, you have <laughs> nothing to do with you being born that color. Word up. Right? It's like, old, have some self-esteem. The, get good at some other shit. If the only thing you got to lean on is your whiteness, that's whack. Yeah. As fuck. What are you good at, bro? Can nobody eat their cousin's pussy like you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> put your head up. Billy, Billy Ray, put your fucking head up. All right? Okay? And by the way, yeah. if that is the thing, you, you listen, you're laughing, but that is the thing. If that is the thing that gets little Billy Ray's confidence up... <laughs> Now he's able to stand on something and move on to other things. It's let's long. not act like let's not act like a woman telling you that you're good at that cunnilingus. <laughs> Don't motherfucking boost your goddamn confidence. As long up. as they're both over eighteen and consenting, that's that's, that's really all that matters. Yeah, I've told y'all a million times how you know I I got a a, 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 a good friend of mine told me I did not eat pussy. Told you how to or said told, you were bad. Told, at it. To, told me I did not know how to eat. Oh pussy. yeah, heartbreaking, right? And no, she was a real friend because she gave me a book called The Ultimate Kiss. Uh-huh. Yeah. That book taught me how to properly give Kungalingus. But you also Kung- are willing to Kung- learn, though, Charlemagne. Kungalingus. You're right. And the Because guys right. aren't easily. And, 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 and I know I was willing to unlearn my whack-ass technique. Just mm-hmm. blah, 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 being all over the place. Wax <laughs> on, wax off with your tongue. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was willing to unlearn that bullshit technique yeah. and learn a proper technique of licking the clitoris off and on like a light switch. Mm. So all you racists have to be willing to unlearn all of that bullshit, racist, white supremacy, bigotry that you've been taught by your parents or America. And you have to be Get willing skill. to learn. Get a yes. skill. You have to be willing to learn a skill, but also learn real love and empathy. Yeah. And learn that everybody is just like you. They're just a different fucking color. That's it. I think yeah, it's pretty good, man. don't fuck our cousins. Say what? And we don't fuck our cousins. And we don't. <laughs> Second cousins. <laughs> it's a small town. Shut the hell up. Listen, a lot of us, first <laughs> experiences, we're with family members. With family members. Keep it I'm in the sorry. family. It, it is what it is. I it mean, is what shit. it is. I got molested by my cousin's ex-wife when I was eight. Uh, uh, uh. And after that, I was getting humped on by cousins. It's like, all right, listen. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace, guys.